looking for planets. Astrophysicists have known for a number of years that the amount of matter in space which can be directly observed is significantly less than the amount which can be calculated from the gravitational forces governing the galaxy or larger groups of galaxies. Simply put, the amount of matter in the universe must be more than we are able to observe. And so, we speak of missing matter or dark matter, which does not shine, but which obviously exists. Microlenticular gravitational phenomena allow us to indirectly discover objects which possess a gravitational field, yet may be so weak that they shine dimly or not at all. These microlenticular gravitational phenomena were first seen by us in 1993 and numerous times since then during the course of this project. The work goes on. Last year we began the next phase of the project, named OGLE, with the installation of a new mosaic CCD camera designed and built by Professor Udalski, who heads up the entire project. The first statistical analyses of these microlenticular gravitational phenomena indicate that the amount of dark matter in the form which can be detected by these phenomena will probably not be enough. Thus the riddle of dark matter, to a certain degree, remains unsolved. A number of theories exist, some quite exotic, to account for this. Some physicists believe new particles exist that have not yet been discovered. There is therefore a broad range for speculation. As astronomers, we've been looking for material more astrophysical in nature, either weak stars, brown dwarfs, or planets. We've discovered many such objects, yet not enough, based on statistical analyses, to make up for the missing matter. So the question still remains, and finding the answer will be a significant point in the history of astronomy. In addition to microlenticular gravitational phenomena, we have also done many other projects. We've observed variable stars, and last year we decided to do a series of observations of selected dense fields near the center of our galaxy and to try to identify phenomena which would indicate the passage of a small object across the face of a star. These are known as transits, which are well known in our solar system. Every few years we see the passage of one of the external planets, Venus or Mercury, across the face of our Sun. Because the Sun is very close, we can see its face, and the small black point is the face of the planet, which covers a tiny part of the Sun's face as it crosses. Exactly the same phenomenon may take place in solar systems around other stars. We've tried to find the characteristic reduction in brightness of a distant star caused by a planet moving across its face. When the dot, that is Venus, moves across the face of our Sun, it covers a small part of the Sun, and the Sun is that much less brighter. The very same thing may happen in a solar system of a distant star with planets orbiting around it. After doing a series of observations last summer, we performed a detailed analysis of those stars. 
Of the millions of possible stars, we selected several hundred thousand, where the probability of such an occurrence was the greatest. Of these, we found that over 40 objects showed slight decreases in their light curves. Nearly all of them were periodic in nature, which is one more indication that they were caused by an object orbiting its star in a cycle, that is, a planet. It's hard to say whether they're all planets, most likely not. Like microlenticular gravitational phenomena, this observational method of locating transits picks up three basic types of objects. They can be classic planets, they can be brown dwarfs, which are weak stars, or stars with too little mass to initiate a thermonuclear reaction, which is the basic energy source in a normal star. The third possibility is that they are very weak stars, double stars, where one is relatively bright, while the other is so small and weak that it cannot be seen directly, but displays its presence periodically as it crosses in front of its larger partner. Additional observations including spectral measurements, are required to identify these objects more precisely. I know of teams of astronomers who will be carrying out such observations. We plan to continue looking for such phenomena in other parts of the sky.